right, here we are in the Home Depot drywall section. And this is the Sheetrock brand. Sheetrock's the brand name there, you see. And uh, it comes one sheet at a time. You just peel off one of these to uh, separate them. And they'll be on every other side. And uh, I was just talking to the Home Depot guys now. They were telling me that for 35 bucks, they will deliver it and actually bring it down into your basement. So that is completely worth it. Now, they do sell larger sheets. This is a 4x10 and a 4x12 half inch sheet. Now these are going to be tricky to get down into a basement and go around corners, but uh, usually people get the 4x8s because they're easier to handle. But the larger sheets you can avoid seams. Now all of this is the same thickness and so you get uh, here at the end is special kind. You see this drywall covered in green paper is a mold resistant uh, sheetrock for bathrooms. And uh, they even make uh, other kinds. But this is the typical green that you'll find that they use in bathrooms. And then here at the end is the uh, fire code. This is a thicker, so usually you use this anywhere where you need a, a thicker sheet to get up to code and this is uh, what they'd use in you know on a garage wall or something like that and then you have uh, some of the stuff that's used for bathrooms setting tile but that's not related and over on this side you have your um, dry sheetrock mix you add the water and use it as you need it or you can buy them pre-mixed which is what I like to do and they come in a few different they call them weights um, this is the regular stuff you would fill in cracks and do your tape and then they would have um, sometimes this you'd use this for the uh, surface coat one trick I learned really early in doing drywall is don't try to do the finish coat on your first coat. Uh, as a teenager, I figured that one out. You just let it dry, sand it down, you do another coat, and do it a few times, and that's how you get uh, a nice finish. Here's some thin half-inch drywall, and uh, you don't really ever use that much unless you're doing um, special rooms and architectural things. So these are the corner beads. And these come in handy. I like to use the paper ones. They work well enough. This is an inside corner. Makes for a nice straight edge. There's an outside corner. Then they have a uh, paper bull nose. That's a rounded corner. And then they also make plastic ones. Now you can use an adhesive. A 3M sprayed adhesive for these. Um, or with the paper ones you can just use mud to adhere it. Another thing you're going to need is tape. They come in different size rolls. And this one, uh, it's unlike the others in the store. I don't know why this is here. This one has dimples and holes in it to allow the air bubbles to get through. Sometimes when you're doing it, you get the air bubbles. Or you can use the mesh tape here different styles and they have the mold resistant kind for the bathroom as well so it's just a, a preference if you've never done it before this might be easier for you than dealing with the paper the paper can be a little bit tricky if you've never used it before and actually they even have this yellow stuff which has a sticky side to it so you put it right on the drywall and then uh, with no mud or joint compound at all and then you um, paste right over it. So let's go look at the tools. Now I like to use about three sizes. I get the widest one I can find. Let's see all these look to be the same size here. So those are about a 14 inch blade. And then I'll get a uh, about a six inch. And then just a small one. Um, even maybe a little smaller than that. That's what I like to use. You can have a pan for holding your mud. 
and this is called a hawk. This is, if you're more of a professional, you'd use this. It's a handle on a platter, basically. You hold it like that, put your mud on here, and you can fill up, use one of these. A little trowel, and you can fill in your joints and, and cracks much quicker than if you're using a tray with a, uh, a knife there. And if you get a long knife, you're going to want a tray that's long too to make sure it fits in there. I hate the plastic ones, but if you're just doing a tiny patch job, that'll be fine. That'll still work. Um, here's another professional tool. It's called a banjo. And this is if you're doing a lot. They're about a hundred bucks. Um, but if you're just doing it um, part-time, just finishing your basement, you don't really need one of those. Here's a must-have tool. It's a drywall saw. There's a hammer. You only use those if you're using the nails. And then you've got to have a knife to score and cut the sheetrock. There's another tool that you got to have. Makes it a lot quicker. This little square, you can score and mark all the way down the sheet. Super handy to have one of those. And for texturing your ceiling, if you're going to do texture walls, you can hook up a hopper to an air compressor. You throw the mud in the bucket. Sometimes you have to uh, dilute it, mix it with some water so it comes out easier. And you just spray your walls and then you can knock it down. Knock it down is when it's dried a bit, but not totally dry. You take a knife and you scrape it across to flatten the bumps. Uh, I don't use one of those. I just use my large knife to knock down the ceiling texture. These weird brushes are for texturizing your ceiling. You see there's a handle you can put in there. And you dip it in your mud and you just splatter it along the ceiling. When it gets kind of dry, you knock it down with the knife. What else is there? Okay. And when you're done, you need to sand. So these poles are good for sanding ceilings or higher walls. You put some sandpaper on the end. Here it is in different grits. Now this is like a screen mesh. I like to use this. I haven't really used this other stuff. These can build up, you know, um, and get loaded with joint compound if it's not dry. So you got to wait for it to dry and then you can sand down your joint compound. Um, where are the sponges? These are really good for the corners. It's a sponge. It's a sponge with sandpaper on it and it really helps to square up and clean up the inside corners of the walls that you just did. Obviously, it's going to be dusty. You need a mask. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, no, I th oh, the screws. These are the drywall screws that you use. I never use nails. I always use screws. Because if I make a mistake and for some reason I need to take the sheet off, which doesn't happen often, but uh, you can undo screws. You can't really take out nails easily. Anyway, an inch and a quarter. Uh, coarse screws. You can buy a box like this, but it's usually worth it to buy a giant bucket of screws. 50 bucks there. And an uh, inch and a quarter is good enough for for uh, most jobs you're doing. So anyway, I hope that's helped. hope that's answered some questions. Um, basically, you can get either one of these for your first coat and then get that light blue bucket, the uh, topping compound, for the second coat. If you're putting up sheetrock and your walls are uneven, they sell these. These are just cardboard strips that uh, you can shim. You just attach to the wall and can uh, fill in the voids if your framing job is uneven. But you could use anything for that. You don't really need to buy those. Anyway, so, that's the kind of cart you're going to want if you're going to buy a few sheets and haul it out yourself. But um, like I said before, a Home Depot employee just told me for 35 bucks they'll bring it to your house. That's not a bad deal if you're finishing a basement. Anyway, I hope this helped. If it has, 
please click like and uh, leave a comment too. Thanks.